Welcome back to Beauty Marks Podcast. My name is Elizabeth Savion, and thank you for joining me on another episode of this whole podcast. On today's episode, I will be sharing things that I wish I would have told my younger self. I personally feel like I like seeing videos and hearing about what people have learned through their experiences. I am someone that definitely likes to better myself. I like self-improvement things and just things that I can work on. Um, but that's just me. And, um, and that's been my journey really this year has been just working in areas of myself. And so it was my birthday on Friday, 9-11. Thank you for all the birthday love, the wishes, the comments. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, in my family, we kind of make things a big deal for birthdays. So they really went all out. I got to spend time with the people that I love and got to see um, some of my friends, which was really, really nice. Um, you know, in the in what I could do with all this quarantine and social distancing stuff. So I just did something at home and um, I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I even got my makeup done, which was, even though, yes, I do do my own makeup. um, I wanted to get it done that day and I got it done by someone. There's probably only two people that I would trust to really do my face. And she's one of them. And I'm like, I'm going to hire you for every event that I have because it's just amazing. And I feel like if you've ever gotten your makeup done, it's like, it's so relaxing. And then that morning I also got a massage. So I feel like it was just a very nice day, like, you know, just like pampered. So anyways, so I have just been really taking the time off for my birthday weekend, just really was present and really enjoyed it. Um, the weather here in Florida was a little rainy and I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, what's funny is that the past few years, I like one of my birthdays, a hurricane came through on the weekend of my birthday. So literally there was no power, no light or anything on my birthday. Um, so I've had pretty interesting birthdays over the years. So hopefully next year I'll be able to go on a big trip for my birthday. But for this one, it was definitely, I'm just grateful. It was great. So I wanted to get right into it and talk about what things I have learned. Um, some people do lists, some people just kind of share the big things, but like overall, my umbrella of what I've learned is the importance of valuing and having a support team. I would say that that's one of the biggest things that I've learned and valuing your family. Um, because for me, at least I've gone through the seasons where I like, you know, only want to be with certain friends or only certain people. And then when really hard times come, you really do realize who's there and who actually, you know, follows up and who will show up and be the first one to show up. And for me, it's definitely been always my family, like my family, no matter what, if we are going through something, they still show up when they need to. Um, so that has been one of the main pillars of what I've learned over my years, 25 years, and also taking care of yourself and loving yourself. Even though it's like such a simple thing, I have come to realize how important and how much I was lacking my own self-love with myself. And until I got to that point of being like, wait, like I am unhealthy and I can't do, like I can't love others if I'm not okay with myself. And until that realization and getting to that place, I feel like a lot of things have changed personally. Again, I'm still always, will always say I'm a work in progress, but I feel so much better because I have been able to love myself and be able to then pour out and love others. Um, another thing is that you decide how much or what you allow to make you suffer, make you upset. You allow what affects you because life is going to happen. And I think that it's our responsibility to really know that we are in control of our reaction to things that happen. Um, so I feel like overall, in so many things that have happened in my life, um, just realizing that I don't want to be reactive to everything that happens and just knowing that I have control over that, which as we know in previous podcasts that I've shared on here is that I am a kind of person that I like to have a plan. I like to know the next step. And 
a lot of things, especially this year, have shown me that I have very little control over really what happens, more of my reaction to it, which is, you know, that's the piece that I know that at the end of the day, I do have, um, I can practice my own self-control over my emotions, my thoughts, and all of that. Um, And then another important thing is about your finances and how that is so important. So those are like the pillars of what really I will be talking about. And then I will go into more things. Um, Of course, my faith has been the foundation of my life. um, And I realize how important it is to today. Um, I definitely do give, I know that the reason financially in, in different parts of my life, opportunities, doors that have opened, I know it's because of my faith in God and because and I pray about them. I put them in God's hands and I have just seen his hand in those things that I allow him to be in um, and that I want to see him, you know, like I surrender to him. So the second thing is, Um, like what I was sharing about the priority of having your family or support, because I know not everybody has their family, but just having those people that support you. And I think that the main thing about this is knowing that as you get older, you will lose friends and that's okay because then you allow other people that will be actually good friends and there's seasons for your friends. And I think that you have to know when to let that go and when to know that, hey, this friend is maybe like a fun friend or, hey, this friend is a friend, you know, when we do, we have a commonality and that's what we do and that's the only way. And then you have your friend that you can call and cry about or friends that will pray for you or friends that you can go on trips with or friends like there's, I feel like friends need to be put in a category instead of trying to make them all like the end all be all like if your friend isn't like this and they're not your friend no i feel like you have to know um and because in the beginning like i remember when i was younger i would always be like yeah that's my best friend that's my best friend like i would throw around that word and i feel like now i really as an adult i don't really call people like best friends it's more like they're my very close very good friend or one of my you know, so like, I, I feel like I don't use that word for everyone. Like, I don't call everyone like, oh, yeah, that's my friend. Like, it's like, okay, do they like know my birthday? Like, do they know like anything about me? You know, I feel like that's other things. And then also like the kind of friends that you have is like, are you willing to open and be honest with them about stuff? Or do you feel like you're, you can't be yourself around them? And I think that that's all the things. And I want to do side note, I want to do a podcast on friends because I definitely have had a lot of experiences in that. But that is one of the things that I have realized now that I value the friends that, you know, value me as well. You know, it's like a mutual, the friendships that I have right now are definitely mutual relationships, not one's chasing after the other, not one's ghosting the other, you know, it's like a genuine friendship. Um, and you're not trying to gain anything, you know what I mean? Like you genuinely love the person for who they are. So that's a, something that I wanted to add. Um, I think that um, sharing about finding your gift, like knowing what you're good at is so important and being the best at that. Not looking at what you lack in, but looking at what you're great in already that you can continue to shine and be really, really good in that. I know that I lost a lot of time trying to compare my gifts with someone else and be like, well, like if I can just start maybe learning this so that I can be good at that, but that wasn't my gift. And that wasn't, so I was like wasting time instead of perfecting what I already am good at. You know, it's like, okay, I know for me, I like social media. I like talking. I like the camera. I like, um, you know, fashion. I like community, talking with people, connecting, networking. You know, I'm definitely more hands-on and maybe other things wouldn't fit good for me, you know, And, and like trying to like do something outside of my box. Like, for example, like learning how to sing, right? Like, I feel like I can harmonize a little bit like you know I have a tune or two but I know I'm not a singer like I know I'm not gonna make it out there being a singer so it's like will I spend all this time trying to do that 
or will I spend my time in things that come more naturally to me that I can perfect and make better? Another thing is about being in the moment and being present. Um, I know that time goes by so fast. And especially this year, I feel like I'm like, how are we in September already? Um, it seems so far away. And I think that the more you're present in the, in the moment, you really enjoy it. You know, when you're around people that bring joy to your life and that you enjoy spending time with them, when you enjoy talking with them, when you enjoy, you know, watching a movie or like whatever you genuinely like doing that makes you feel happy. Um, I think that those are the moments that you should be more present in. Um, because I feel like those moments are so small, especially if it's with people that you love and that, you know, matter. I think that you really need to be in the moment instead of chasing the next moment to come. Um, the next thing that's very important to me, which I shared about loving yourself and taking care of yourself, is knowing that if you are full on the inside, you're able to give from a full cup, not an empty cup, and you don't feel drained or you know, you can love on other people. When you're mentally, physically, and emotionally well, that means that you're taking care of your body, you are taking care of your mind, and you are emotionally good. Um, I think that you just function so much better. So I feel like I have created, you know, a way that I can filter things out, you know, and the way that I think, things like that, um, compared to when I was a lot younger. And I feel like I would just let everything just like <laughs> trample over me. So I feel like you do build thick skin in what you allow to, um, you know, get into your thoughts, what you allow to, to sit there and to suffer about. And um, I think that when you are good and healthy on the inside, it will reflect on the outside, which is a really big, one of the main messages that through this podcast, I hope that you get is that beauty is also an internal to outward. Um, it's great if you take care of your outside, which of course, you know, health, you know, working out, whatever is good for you, whatever um, is part of your routine or you like to do. Um, and if you like to get ready, all of that stuff, but do it for you. And then at the same time, though, make sure that the inside is just as good. Um, and that you are feeling good and whole and content on the inside as well, because that reflects on the outside. Another thing is about don't care what other people say or their opinions about you or the, the life that they want for you. Um, I have learned over the years when people tell me stuff about their life, I ask them like, okay, do you want to hear my opinion? Or are you like asking me for my suggestion? Or are you just wanting to vent? I feel like it's the same when you're sharing something about your life. It's like other people have their opinions about things that you do and all of that, but you allow and you also shouldn't dictate on that advice. Make sure that you're receiving wise counsel if that's counsel that you actually want to hear from and you're allowing them to say stuff into your life or um, guide you in some way. But at the end of the day, you will always make the decision. At the end of the day, um, you can sometimes spend so much time trying to get opinions and advice on things that you're doing, what you shouldn't do, you know, if they like what you're doing, if you don't. When it's like at the end of the day, like I think that having your own, your own kind of judgment on certain things is okay. Like you being able to make your own decisions about things. Um, and of course, just knowing that you also have valuable input, you know, into your life. And if you have already a good foundation with your own, you know, convictions, your own standards, whatever that might be, then that will reflect in your decisions as well. Another very important thing, especially for my ladies, um, no man can heal you or make you happy. That is up to you. That is a full-time job for you to work on and be whole. Um, we are all messed up in different areas of our life, and I feel like you putting that responsibility on someone else, it's not fair. And even if that person's a great, amazing person, they cannot carry that load for you. So that is your job to be 
healthy and whole. You are not looking for a missing piece in your life. You are looking for someone to add to your life, some things that you don't have. Not that at the end of the day, you should be functional by yourself. And when that person comes, and I know that in my life, I have put that responsibility on someone else, which really strained my relationships because that's a lot of pressure. And now kind of realizing and not idolizing that idea of like a man is going to save me. It's like, I first have a savior, but also, which is Jesus. But it's like, aside from that, I need to be good by myself. Like get to the point that I'm like, I'm good. Like by myself, I'm not looking out for someone to fill my loneliness cup or my desperation cup or, you know, cause I want to take cute couples pictures. Like that's not why I want to be in a relationship. So that is just a side note. Um, because I feel like when you're younger, you're just trying to be in a relationship because everybody's doing it and you just want to have that experience. But then when you look back and when I look back at my relationships, I know that I am much more mature in those areas now than I was back in the day. Something very important that people don't talk about is about money, financial wisdom. Um, I think that this has been something that I have shared, like even in my podcast previously about me moving out and being, not being as prepared as I would have wanted to. That is not, to be honest, that has been something that I am not naturally good at, meaning like being super financially savvy, I've had to work at it. Um, and I can admit that, you know, I know that like when there's a sale, it's like, Ooh, like I need to go buy that. You know, I, I like to have things in stock, um, you know, backups and things like that. And instead I know a lot of people that I surround myself with that are so good with managing their money that they are like, do you really need that? Like, you know, so I've had to really work at that. It doesn't come naturally to me, but at the same time, I've had to get the literacy, you know, and the mindset shift of, you know, if you don't know how to ma manage a thousand dollars, you are not going to know how to manage a hundred thousand dollars. You know, that's the best advice someone has told me and that they have said, it's like, if you are, you're still going to be broke at a hundred thousand dollars because it's not the money, it's the mindset, you know? So it's your mindset of you're trying to live exceeding that, that amount, you know, and getting into debt. I think that, um, I did a financial peace university course a few years ago and, um, you know, I was talking about debt and just, you know, I know that there's some things that I agree and there's some things that I don't agree with the whole financial, um, Peace University, but the main concepts of if you don't have the money, why do you need it? You know, like, or why would you go and put yourself in, in debt? You know, like, for example, like for vacations, things like that. Um, I've had to learn um, and, you know, just be more aware that at the end of the day, like you're working so hard for the money that you have that you're not just going to throw it away and then be a slave to paying it back, you know, um, if you see the other person or the debt on your credit card and all of that. So financial, being financially free is so important, um, especially as you get older. Also finding your passion and go for that, which goes towards what I was saying earlier about, you know, finding your gift. Eventually your what you're very passionate about, which is especially like a today's thinking, like of people in my generation, it's like you will eventually make, you can make money from it, you know? So like whatever you love to do, go for that because that's exactly what you're probably going to end up doing or wish that you did. Um, and that will always lead to more money because it will come more naturally. You know, you're not going to be a slave to your job that you hate, you know? Um, at least for me, I think that that's one of the things that I really pray about. And I'm like, Lord, like, you know, that this is the type of job that I don't want. So like, I want to be able to do and be able to have the job that I love to go to, um, that is still work, but it's at the end of the day, something that I'm passionate about. Something also, um, that I have learned over the years is that no one is time for you to leave things when seasons of your life when it's done, you know, when a season has ended, when things have expired, um, that can be a job, um, a friendship, a relationship. Um, I think for me, when I have started feeling uncomfortable or like very on edge, um, 
in a job, for example, or like I start being kind of like, I don't really enjoy or I like dread it. Um, I think that those are the moments that you have to know that maybe it's time to move on to something else. Maybe you've outgrown it, or maybe it's just not challenging you in a certain way, at least when it comes to a job. Um, when it comes to a friendships, friendships can be toxic too, or unhealthy, or there can be an unhealthy balance in friendships. And I think that you have to know when things have ended and not be so attached to them um, and know that there will be going back to the friends thing that at the end of the day, there will be seasons when you're closer to some people than others. Um, and that doesn't make them a bad friend. That just means that you guys have changed. Maybe you're, you know, when I know, like, for example, my life right now is very different to friends that I have that are married, friends that I have that have kids, friends that I have that have um, moved to other areas that are living a very different lifestyle than me. So it's like, I can follow up, I can check, you know, we can check on each other, but maybe our mutual connection of our friendship might be different. Um, And that doesn't mean that we're not friends anymore. It just means that our level of, you know, maybe it was just a season or maybe it's trying, if you want to value and keep that friendship, then it's finding a way where you can still be friends and evolving with the kind of relationship that it is. Um, And then with the relationship, I know that in the past I have kept wanting, and this is something that I have shared in my other podcast episodes that I know that I am a very committed, like, this is it, this is it, you know, this is the one. And I was like that since high school. And I think that when I look back, I'm like, my mindset was like, if I was already married, like, and that was it. And I think that you have to know when things are done. Um, and cause if not, you will suffer and that's not worth it, you know? So I think it's like with anything, you have to know when things are over, um, and not prolong them or not keep them or not chase them, you know, um, like just let them be something that for me, I've also learned is about embracing my story. Um, things that I've been through, things that I have experienced and not being ashamed of it. You know, this whole podcast has taught me to be being transparent. Like there's freedom in transparency when I'm honest about things that I have struggled with in the past versus me just saying like, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna keep it to myself. And again, I know that not everybody's on the podcast end of talking. Some people are just more listening, but I think no matter what season you are in your life, it's knowing to know where you come from, why you are the way that you are, um, and what you've been through and embrace it. You know, it's part of your story and each of us has a story and not be ashamed of it or not hide behind it. It's more like, this is what it is, you know, and you have overcome things, you know, so it actually makes you stronger at the end for you sharing. And when you look back, you're like, wow, I've been through all of that. And this is how I am today. Um, And another thing is about not everyone is like you. So don't expect people to love the same way that you do, to be the same way that you are, to appreciate um, you in a certain way because everybody's very, very different. And at the end of the day, you, like for me, I know I had for a long time, people would be like, oh, you're just so nice. And until I got into the workforce um, and in corporate, I realized that a lot of people were like, well, you have to be a shark. You have to know, um, you have to change. Like, you know, I, I was like you when I was very young, you know? And I feel like for me personally, I think that it's not about you changing, being nice or kind. It's about you just learning that not everybody has the same intentions as you do for people. So just being very careful with how you allow people to either step on you to, you know, do things in, you know what I mean? Like to try to put you down. Um, so just being very aware, like in a way, kind of like more smart um, about things and not naive that people are like you. Cause most likely they are not. Um, I know I've worked in environments where people, you know, that everybody's a shark in there and or everybody's like trying to go after you or maybe doesn't want the best intentions for you. But at the end of the day, I am still genuinely a kind person that is not going to treat someone or like do things just because they're doing them for me. It's like, no, if this is part of my character, I'm still going to 
be this way, but I'm going to watch out. You know, I'm also not going to expect you that you're my best friend when I know that you're talking about other people. Um, so I think it's just knowing that about other people and not being naive that the world is such a kind place, you know, cause it's not, but there can still be kind people in it. Something also very important that has been through my journey about this year, especially, um, is about being happy with yourself and liking to be by yourself. And I spoke about this in the podcast before about moving out and just kind of learning how to do things by yourself. Cause it's like at the end of the day, like you're like, okay, well, I have to go to the store. I have to do this. Um, like going to the movies, going to dinner by yourself. The first relationship you really have is with yourself and that should be a healthy relationship and you should enjoy being by yourself at the same time. So, um, another very important thing that has to do with, you know, being happy with yourself is also talking, saying nice things to yourself, um, speaking affirmations. I think that that is very powerful. And then being a positive person. Um, I think it's not about a lot of people are like, well, like I'm realistic. Um, or well, like I, it's not that I'm trying to be negative or things like that, but I personally believe that if you are positive about things and you have a positive outcome, um, and you speak that, I think it's more about speaking it out, um, of what you want to see, you know, like, so it's like your circumstances are some way and it's like, okay, my circumstances are like this, but what I see is like being hopeful for things to be good. Um, because if we focus so much on how things are not good and how things like, I feel like that defeats the whole point of why people say to be grateful for what we have. It's like, it's not focusing on the horrible things that will happen, which do happen. It's about trying to see the positive light, um, throughout our situations and more with ourselves, because I feel like that's how we the way we speak about things, it also shows like a reflection of us and what's on the inside. So it's like being positive and saying the affirmations to yourself and speaking positively about the situations, then you're able to also be positive and be a light in other people's lives. So when they can tell you things, you're not like, yeah, that, you know, like, yes, you sympathize, but you're not like, yeah, the whole world sucks. Like, you know, like, no, it's at the end of the day, you can also encourage other people. Something else that um, I've experienced is about not letting my age threaten my position. Um, just because you're young, I think that you have to present yourself in a way that people respect you and that you also know have like that confidence because I feel like confidence is your power especially when you're young and you're doing things um so I feel like in most of my positions and most of my of my roles I was always the youngest one but I made sure to have that respect of people to know like okay, yes, I'm young, but what does that matter? Like, what, is, what does my age have to do with what I'm doing? At the end of the day, if I produce the work, if I know I'm knowledgeable in this, I know that I'm perfect for this position. And so not doubting yourself because you're young. You know what I mean? Yes, you can always be learning and that's why people get mentors and things like that. But at the end of the day, I think that your confidence will always show. Some people have even thought that I'm older than I am or like, I'm like, they're like, oh, you look so young. Like, how long have you worked in this? You know, and then I'm like, yeah, I was like 21, you know, like I'm so young, you know, but at the end of the day, like they thought because of how I presented myself, they weren't questioning that. It was just more of that I look young. It wasn't about my knowledge because my knowledge is definitely experience. You know, I've experienced, I have a lot of experience in different positions, like, and especially this is more of an example, like when I was working in more marketing in the corporate world, people would be like, so like, how long have you been doing this? And I'm like, actually, I've been doing this for like seven years, but thank you for asking. So don't let people put you down for your age. So those are things that I have learned over the years and things that I wish I would have known when I was younger. Um, I also wanted to share three things about me just so you guys can know a little bit more about me. That is that one of the wildest things that I have ever done is gone whitewater rafting, which was crazy. And if you wanted to hear that story, I went whitewater rafting in the middle of of the mountains for five hours with no reception with only women. So it was very interesting and probably the riskiest thing that I have ever done. Um, I did a celebrity's makeup before 
And the two classes that I feel like I took in high school that are still relevant today on what I'm doing definitely was TV production and my keyboard class, which is like where I learn how to type fast on a computer. So I think those are the very productive and the most interesting classes I have ever taken that I'm still using today. So I really hope that I encouraged you guys and that you got something out of it today. Maybe you related to some of those things. Um, when I look back at from 24 to 25, so many things happened. Um, I moved back home. I got a community group. I did like a small group. I um, started this podcast. I went through some really, you know, dark times um, and I was able to overcome all of those things, you know, some of the hardest times, you know, I went through a pandemic this past year, like all of us. So it's like celebrate those victories. You know, when I look back at birthdays, I always see what I have overcome and what I have gained in that year. Cause at the end of the day, every year has something to learn from it. So I hope you got something out of it today. And if you have 30 seconds and can just scroll down to the bottom and leave me a review or thoughts on what you think about this podcast, I would greatly appreciate it. It's like in a way a free birthday gift for me. So please leave a review um, or share it with a friend. Um, every time you share or you say what your favorite episode is, all that stuff means the world to me. It is like a free gift to me. Um, and thank you so much for your support. Make sure to follow me at Elizabeth Sabby and subscribe to this podcast. And I will see you guys on next week's episode with a special guest. Have a great week.